Good morning, gladiators. It is November. We are here in November, just a few months away from Christmas. You know, you guys know I love Christmas. I'm already celebrating it. All right, here we go. We get a glance. So for this week, you will be working on the following if it decides to come up. There it is. All right, so today we're going to learn about the Bill of Rights. Tomorrow, no school for you guys. Wednesday, we're going to learn about the principles of the Constitution. Thursday, we're going to learn about the United States economic system and how it started. And then Friday, we're going to learn about where we are today with the economic system based on how it started. Okay. So Monday, we will watch a video on the Bill of Rights. I think you're going to enjoy this video. Then we're going to discuss the Bill of Rights a bit. Today, you're going to have a drag and drop activity based on the Bill of Rights. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights, I actually got this from Mr. Raymond Civics, ELC. He's amazing. Um, the Bill of Rights, you have to think about uh, the Constitution. We used to have this horrible system called the Articles of Confederation, which wasn't a very good Constitution. So the U.S. Constitution is our second one. OK, now you have people that were against ratifying the Constitution and then you were some that were for ratifying the Constitution. We have the anti-federalists who didn't believe in it and then the federalists who did. All right. So or anti. Sorry. So many of them wanted to amend the Constitution. You have Henry Mason and Adams. We've talked about Patrick Henry, we talked about Mason, we talked about John Adams. So the Anti-Federalists demanded that a Bill of Rights be added to the U.S. Constitution. So these were the people that wanted the Constitution to be to be amended. And that was for various reasons. Let's go back to the lesson from last week when we talked about King George III and everything that he was doing to us. So we ended up making a Declaration of Independence, basically declaring ourselves free from Britain. But then all of those things, even though they were listed, all the grievances were listed on the Declaration of Independence, we still had a lot of people that were very concerned about getting going back to the way it used to be. For a while there, after we broke free from independence, you have all these colonies, they're all kind of doing their own thing, all willy-nilly, right, doing their own thing, loving that they have their own, their own rights, loving that they have their own laws. But we needed to have a better system, a system that was going to work for all of us. And um, this is where the Anti-Federalists and the Federalist Party, they start arguing, going back and forth on how we can, how are we going to be able to make this fair for everyone? Well, of course, you remember going back to the way King George III taught, um, treated us, we needed to make sure that whatever we did that was going to make the people happy was to add mm -hmm. some rights. So these rights would never be taken away because people were so concerned if you if you ratify this constitution, you're going to take away my rights and we're just going to go back to the way it used to be. And this was something that was really important for people to make sure that that we had something in place that was going to protect everyone. So they added the Bill of Rights to the Constitution uh, in 1789, and it was ratified in 1791. Originally, there were 12, but they ended up coming up with just 10. Uh, Mason did a really good job at putting these together and going back to, again, everything. We needed to make sure that it matched the grievances that were on the Declaration of Independence so that way we wouldn't be treated unfairly and we would have these rights that would protect us. So you have your personal rights, you have your legal rights, and you have a set of rights that are there to protect you for those that are not listed. Okay, so what is a right? So things that you are allowed to do because of nature or because of law, these things can these cannot be denied, right? You cannot be denied of these rights. Remember, um, oh my God, help me out here. <laughs> John Locke said, lock that idea in your head that everyone deserves natural rights, right? We all deserve individual rights and that government shouldn't tell us what to do. It should be the other way around. So a definition is a personal liberty and privilege guaranteed to U.S. citizens by the Bill of Rights. 
You have the First Amendment that Congress shall make no law respect, respecting an establishment of religion. Basically, you can have any religion that you want. You can protest if you want. You can even um, petition if you want. You can even publish if you want, but whatever you publish, like for the press, it has to be something that's true, right? It cannot be a fabricated lie. It has to be true. So the First Amendment is uh, a personal right. This is an individual right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I love the First Amendment. Okay. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Then we have the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Now, this is a really, this is a, a right that constantly is going back and forth between people because originally when this was set, this was set to protect the people uh, in case they were to be attacked, maybe by um, another military or if this or they were to be attacked by the American natives. But it wasn't. And even though, yes, we have these rights, we have we have the right to bear arms. It needed to be they set it up originally like this, a well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And this one was was something that, you know, it can go both ways. Now, a lot of times you hear politicians say they want to take away your Second Amendment. That is not true. They will not take away your Second Amendment because it is it is a right. It is a it is listed in the Bill of Rights, the 10 Bill of Rights that is right above the U.S. Constitution. This is like a set in stone. It will not be taken away from you. It cannot be taken away from you, no matter what president it, it is. Then you have the Third Amendment. Let's go back to quartering soldiers. Remember the Quartering Act? We had people that uh, soldiers were being quartered in our homes. Well, we added that. So during a time of peace, we can we don't have to have soldiers in our home. The Fourth Amendment is to protect from unreasonable search and seizure. So someone can't just go into your home without a warrant. Right. They have to have probable cause to search anything in your home and they must have a warrant. We'll talk a little bit more about that, how that how this. The email protected by the Fourth Amendment, we'll talk a little bit more about that today. The Fifth Amendment, you have the right to remain silent, right? Don't be a witness to your own crime, right? So this is basically you have the right to an attorney. You have the right to um, not be it, not be jeopardized twice based on something if you were found innocent. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on today. This gives us a, uh, the right to a grand jury, no double jeopardy, no self-incrimination, the right to due process, and just compensation for property confiscation. We'll talk more about that. The Sixth Amendment, the right to a speedy trial, the right to a lawyer, the right to a jury, right? So we will talk about how if you do go to court, you have these rights. If someone accuses you of a crime, you are innocent until proven guilty. And you have jury members and, of course, the law that protects you from that, that will define your crime, that will define if you did do something wrong and will, um, at that point, the jury will decide if you were found guilty or not. The Seventh Amendment, civil trials when someone sues someone else. So in this country, we can sue anyone, right? <laughs> it's morning, sad, but it's yeah. true. We can That's sue anyone. I apologize for that. Okay, so the Seventh Amendment protects us, uh, not protects us, it, it gives us the right to, to sue other people. The Eighth Amendment, no cruel and unusual punishment. Think of how it used to be in the old days, right? They used to hang you, and we don't do that anymore. We'll talk about a little bit about that. The Ninth Amendment, other rights exist and the government can't deny these. So these are rights that you have. You have the right to wear the clothes that you want. You have the right to hang out whoever you want. You want to want a right to listen to the music that you want, go to the movies, eat whatever you want, go travel if you want, right? You have these rights. They can't take these rights away from you. And we'll explore a little bit more about this later on. 
And the 10th Amendment, this is a really good amendment. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So this is what we call federalism. And we'll talk about how the states and the government have shared powers. All right, my angels, that is it. It's going to be a super fun day. I think you're really going to like this lesson. And then, of course, you have a drag and drop activity. All right, see you later, gladiators.